Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for uh, participating in today's webinar. Uh, I will be going over the zone tight product line. Uh, for us at the Limo, we like to say the zone tight product range is more than just a zone valve. It consists of three different product types, and I will get into some more specifics on each product type as we go through the presentation. Uh, as an agenda, I will discuss the zone type valves, uh, give a small comparison of the valve uh, as they relate to additional products in the Belumo product line, or in general to other valves in the market. Uh, I'll go over the product range for each valve type. Uh, we'll show you how you can quickly adjust flows in the field with or flow uh, adjustment uh, tool. Uh, I will go over some resources that we have and at the end uh, questions and answers. Zone type valve. We try to achieve better flow control and efficiency by using a higher quality valve. Uh, we use a pressure independent valve which maintains uh, design flow. It reduces over pumping. It decreases the energy costs associated with making and delivering chill water. If pressure independent valves are used, pressure fluctuation in the system will cause flow fluctuation as a result. As one zone closes, the pressure in that zone will increase the pressure in an operating zone, which will result in additional flows being delivered to the zone that is operating However, it's not required. This condition is known as flooding the coil. So let's take a closer look at the product selection that's within the zone type family. They are built on the ball valve technology that you know and trust, on the CCV technology that Belimo introduced in 99. Uh, these products are super compact. They are field adjustable, which means you can have one valve body or a combination of valve bodies and adjust the flow or CV value in the field without having to buy an array of different valves to have different CV values or GPMs. They're higher in close-off than some comparable valves if we're talking about uh, QCV, which is our zone valve. It, we would compare this to the traditional flapper zone valve, and our QCV has a higher close-off for half and three-quarter inch than your traditional zone valve. The PI QCV has a 100 PSI close-off. There's zero leakage, and we support them with a five-year warranty. So, again, the product range is three different valve types. It's your QCV, your quick connect compact valve, your PI QCV, which is a pressure independent quick connect compact valve, and also the six-way CCV, a six-way characterized control valve. I will show you a comparison of the PI QCV versus or traditional PI CCV valve. So the PI QCV because it's so compact, you can see the dimensions from the height and the, and the length of the, the product compared to our current PICCV. So it, from bottom to top, the PICCV at the bottom is a half-inch PICCV with an LR actuator. The picture in the middle is a, the same half-inch PICCV with a KR actuator. And then the picture at the top is our PIQCV with a CQ actuator. You can see the difference in physical dimension of the PI QCV compared to the PI CCV. The PI QCV is about 65% smaller in footprint than the PI CCVs. This means you can install the PI CCVs in some applications where today space might be restricted for a PI CCV. 
So it lends itself to some additional applications where traditionally you might have to put a two-way valve and a manual circuit setter. In this case, you can have your control valve and your uh, pressure independent valve all in one. With the QCV, we're compare it, comparing it to a traditional zone valve. Uh, again, you can see the dimensions of the QCV, both two-way and three-way, compared to a two-way and a three-way zone valve. Uh, QCV is ultra-compact in size, ensures that you can install it in tighter spaces. We have an integrated half-inch conduit connector, and it's furnished with a three-foot plenum cable. Uh, I showed the dimension of the QCV 1.8 inches by 4.5, and we actually took this measurement to ensure that it would be able to fit in a fin tube such as the picture shown on the page. The QCV is your alternative to a traditional flapper zone valve. Again, it's super compact. It consumes less power than your traditional zone valve. The traditional zone valve is about 7 watts of power used. Uh, the QCV, uh, depending on your actuator combination, it could be as low as 0.3 watts. Uh, the CVs are field adjustable by removing the clip, the gray clip on the actuator, and setting it to a different position that lim uh, limits the rotation of the actuator, which in essence uh, change the CV value. And I will show more on this in later slides. The three-way valve, however, does not have the gray clip because this valve is it's designed similar to the three-way traditional flapper zone valve, whereby it's either diverting or changeover application. They're both ball valves, which means they have uh, better close-off than the traditional zone valve. I mentioned the power consumption before. Uh, the actuators on the zone type product range, they were designed using the same technology and our traditional damper actuators. We've been able to scale it down to fit in a smaller body, but with the same technology. We have the patented brushless DC motor that runs at 0.3 watts, depending on the actuator you have. Uh, traditionally, the zone valve, after being powered closed in the off-season, let's say it's a heating application and it's powered closed during the summer, come winter time and you need, or fall and you need to go back into heating season, uh, you ask this valve to open, uh, typically for Sometimes the traditional zone valve will be stuck because of the design of the motor in this particular actuator. We do not have this problem in the QCV because of the brushless DC motor technology that we're using. Again, it's lower in power consumption, about 95% less power used than the conventional zone valve. The product range for the QCV consists of two two-way valves. So the maximum CV value on the two-way valves is, for the half inch, is 5.9 CV and 9.8 for the three-quarter inch. For the three-way valve, it's three individual CVs, uh, one, 2.7, and 4.6. We show an asterisk on the CV value for the two-way valve, which indicates that these valves have the ability for you to adjust the flows in the field. So the flow value that's shown here in the presentation is the maximum value for that valve body. However, you can achieve smaller incremental flows by changing the mechanical limit of the actuator. And again, we will show you more on that. The QCV valves, they snap together quickly and easily. No tools are required for assembling actuator to valve. They have simplified uh, field adjustment of CV, and they're covered by a five-year warranty. For PIQCV, I put up this definition for those who are not very familiar. 
Uh, it's a two-way valve that supplies a specific flow for each value of control signal regardless of pressure variation in the system. So earlier I talked about zones being closed and additional zones getting uh, more water than needed because it's a pressure dependent valve. In this case, if you had pressure independent valves, when zones close, and oper operating zones will maintain its design flow because of the pressure independent valve that's installed. PIQCV product range consists of three valves today. So it's a max GPM value of 0.9, 1.9, and 4.3. At this point, they're all half-inch valves. And they're available with the CQ actuator, which is fail-safe and non-fail-safe. The QCV product range also includes fail-safe and non-fail-safe uh, actuators. On the PIQCV, again, they're also snapped together quickly and easily without tools. Uh, GPMs can be field set, and the, these two are covered by a five-year warranty. We have some accessories to go along with the QCVs and PIQCVs. So we have the stem extension or stem adapter. This is used in the applications where you will insulate the pipe, insulate the valve. Uh, because of the close proximity of the actuator to the valve body, we designed a stem adapter that allows you to mount the stem adapter to the valve and then the actuator on top of the stem adapter, which allows you to insulate the pipe and the valve without getting the insulation on the actuator. We also have, or will have, in the future, we will have an architectural cover. Uh, this is a cover that snaps onto the actuator. No tools are required. It will be of a material type that's paintable. So if you had to install the QCV or PIQCV in a room, and you didn't want to look at the orange, you could put the cover and you could paint the cover in the same color scheme of the room that the product is installed in. We have also um, flow orifices. Um, the flow orifice can help you to verify flow going through the valve should you need to verify flow. And they're available in half and three-quarter inch as well. The media temperature for the QCV and PIQCV, the operating temperature is 212 degrees. However, we can safely contain hot water up to 250 degrees. This is the maximum media temperature limit, not your operating limit. Your operating limit is 212 degrees. QCV two-way, again, they're bi-directional, so piping becomes very easy. You don't need to pay attention to the flow arrows. It can be mounted in any orientation. It's not orientation specific. The three-way valve also are bi-directional. So you can see the two designated piping configuration, uh, a changeover configuration or diverting. This is our flow uh, capacity adjustment tool. So I explained before that you have a full flow or full CV valve, and in the field you have the ability to adjust CVs or GPM. Uh, this is an online tool that you can get at belimo.com or zonetight.com. So you will pick the valve that you have in hand. When you open the tool, it will give you the opportunity to pick either a QCV or a PIQCV. Depending on the product you have in hand, you would select that valve. You would enter the GPM that the coil is requiring for this. Enter the GPM. If you know your delta P, you put the delta P uh, value in, in this spot. You hit submit. The tool will do a calculation. And it will tell you to change the clip position 
from N, which is where we normally ship it. The normal position is at N. It will tell you to change the clip position from the N value to position number three, and your new runtime will be 44 seconds from one position to the end to the new clip position, and your CV value will be 1.2. Should you not know the GPM, maybe it's a retrofit situation and you want to just replace like for like CV. You can type in the CV value in this lower section. Hit submit and it will go through the same process of telling you move your clip position from if you were to type 1.2 CV there, it would tell you to move it, the clip position from N to position 3. This procedure can be done as well for the PIQ CV. With the PIQ CV, we don't need to know what the delta P is. All you need to do is plug in the GPM that you need for the valve, hit submit, and it will tell you to move the clip from the N position to the new setting to achieve that GPM value that you require. Once you've set your new clip position for your on-off or floating type actuator, it's important to note the runtime because this value you would program into your controller so you can tell when the actuator goes from 0 to 100% or 0 to your, your new set position. That might be important for some applications. For other applications where you're using a proportional actuator, you, there is a push button on the top of the actuator. You push that button and the actuator will actually go from left to right and learn the new mechanical limits. And as a result, it will rescale itself, rescale it, uh, itself to accommodate your 2 to 10 volt signal. So instead of only using a partial portion of your 2 to 10 volt signal to go from 0 to a smaller angle, you'll be able to use the full 10 volt signal to go from 0 to the new angle you've set. So the actuator is going to go through a cycle of learning its new mechanical limit and scale your control signal to match that new uh, smaller angle. Also in our zone tight product family is the six-way valve. The six-way valve is basically two characterized control three-way valve that are mechanically linked. They operate in two sequences and there is a sequence one and a sequence two and in between sequence one and two the valve is in the closed position. So it's a linear characteristic valve. The media temperature, maximum operating media temperature on this valve is 180 degrees, 43 degrees for cooling application. It's ideally suited for chill beam application. This is the market we developed this valve for. It's available in sizes half and three quarter inch with a maximum close-off pressure of 50 PSI and differential pressure of 15 PSI. It's bubble tight, zero leakage. It's a pressure dependent valve. So uh, you will need some type of manual balancing valve to help you achieve uh, pressure independence. How does it work? There are, the valve works from top to bottom. So if you were to face the center port towards you and you slice it down the middle, it works from left to right. So all operations on sequence one in this case is on the left and all operation on sequence two is on the right. So in, in this example sequence one, you will pipe your supply from your chiller or boiler on the upper left hand port the flow would exit the valve in the upper center port going to the coil. It would come back from the coil in the center bottom port and exit the left bottom port. This would be the operation for sequence one. Sequence two is on the opposite side of the valve, on the right side. 
And again, supply is piped at the upper right. It exits to the coil at the upper center port, return from the coil at the bottom center port, and exit back to its source on the right bottom port. When you're neither in heating or cooling mode, the valve is in the middle, and the valve is closed to both heating and cooling. These are some typical applications where you might find a six-way valve. So the first picture on the right, we're doing a heating only. So we have a hot water supply, chill water supply, and a changeover valve. Not necessary to use a six-way valve because we're just doing uh, heating or cooling. If we're doing heating and cooling, we would need to have at least four two-way valves in order to make this assembly work, make this application work. However, you can do the same job with a single six-way valve. So imagine you would need, if you had four valves, you would need four control points in order to be able to control these four valves. If you were doing this application, you would need three valves, two for your control, one for your changeover. However, you can accomplish the same task in a single valve with one control point, one analog output to the actuator on the six-way valve would allow you to do your cooling in one sequence, your heating in the other sequence, and your isolation or shutoff in the middle. This saves you time in piping a valve. It saves you the cost of control points. and wiring from an electrical standpoint, you're only needing to wire a single actuator. We have on zonetight.com, we have documentation, submittals, we have a product flyer, and we have the, the technical documentation for the zonetight products. This concludes the presentation. Are there any questions? Yes, Nigel, we have a couple of questions coming through. Um, the first question is, um, can you remove the power head and the internals on the solder type, on the older type models? Can we move, remove the actuator from the older type models of which, was it specific, which, act, which valve? I believe they were yeah. referring to the old zone valve. Okay. Yes, the old, zone, the old zone valve, you can remove the actuator from the valve uh, by pressing a button and pulling the actuator off. Okay, um, next question. Can the three-way QCV be used in a mixing application? No, the three-way QCV was designed for diverting or changeover. It was designed based on the traditional zone valve which is not a modulating or mixing valve. It will go either to the left or to the right. So the ideal application for the three-way valve is either a changeover application or diverting. Okay. Um, can the valve bodies and actuators be purchased separately? We've uh, set up uh, for our distributors bulk packs where you can buy actuator in a pack of 24 and valves in a pack of 24 as well. Okay. Um, will there be larger flows available for the PIQCV? Yes. Uh, in April 2017, we will have a three-quarter inch PIQCV and the flows, uh, the flow for that valve will be up to 9 GPM. Can a six-way EPIV uh, be piped on the coils supply side or only the return? Uh, the six-way EPIV is an electronic pressure independent six-way valve. It can be piped either on the supply side or the return side. So we give the, the flexibility to the installer to choose which side is best or easiest for their installation. 
So yes, it can be piped either on the coil supply side or on the return. Can we service the ball valves without removing the whole valve assembly for repair? Uh, ball valves are not serviceable. There are no parts inside that you can replace. Uh, it's unlike a glow valve that can be repacked or rebuilt. Uh, the ball valve does not require that. Okay. Um, will there be sweat connections offered in the future? Yes. As of uh, April of next year, April 2017, with the release of our new PGPL, we will also have sweat versions of the QCV, both two ways and three ways. Not on the PI QCV, just the QCV. Okay. Um, before we close our presentation, I just want to let you know that we do have some handouts that are downloadable um, for you, and that's going to be a copy of the presentation, the Zone Tight Valves brochure, and the Zone Tight Tech document. Um, if you should have any further questions after the end of the webinar, you can feel free to email me and I will get you those answers to your questions. Again, this presentation was recorded and will be posted to our websites at a later time. And our next webinar is going to be scheduled for uh, November 9th and it's going to be on the new butterfly valve advanced technology for high flow applications. I want to thank Nigel today for giving that excellent presentation, and I also want to thank the audience for participating in our webinars. We look forward to having you participate in the future ones. Everyone have a great day. Thank you very much.